Hello and welcome to this introductory demonstration of PDF to data from Apprise. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to sign in to the PDF to data editor and template manager. Let's go ahead and do that now. Sign in with it. Okay, so what you're looking at here is PDF to data manager. Um, and this is where you'll see your templates as you create them. So let's go ahead and create a template for this demonstration. We'll give our template a name. Invoice template. You can give a description if you'd like. You could also use a predefined um, template. I'm going to select a file from my local machine here. We're going to pick reference invoice number two. Let's go ahead and open that. One thing I want to point out here, if your PDFs are scanned PDFs, you may want to apply OCR pre-processing before we load them into the editor. We'll have more about that in a separate video. Let's go ahead and create our template. Okay, so what we see here in our window is a PDF that represents a typical invoice. And what we're going to do is create fields that are important for data extraction without having to code. For this demonstration, we're going to identify and extract five pieces of information. We are going to extract the invoice number, the bill to address, this table here of line items, the grand total, and a QR code. So let's get started with our first field. So if you go to the bottom left, you create a new data field. Best practices state that you give it a name. We'll call this invoice number as our field name. Talk a little bit about search area. The default here is the whole document. Search for things in the whole document. I'll show a little later how it could be the document, maybe a certain page, or maybe a um, certain custom area. We'll get to that in a little bit. I'm gonna add a selector. So selectors are the workhorses of PDF to data. You could find patterns, paragraphs, tables, images, a variety of different patterns and properties and auxiliary selectors. So this first one for invoice number, notice that it's invoice number colon followed by the number. So anytime it's left to right, that is a pattern. Now what you see on the right here, these are all of the things that PDF to data recognize as extractable. Now this is certainly everything in this case and what we're going to do is limit this. So first of all, you notice that invoice number is an integer. So I'm going to tell it it's an integer. <clears throat> you can see we're, you know, narrowing down what could be extracted. And I'm going to add a limiter to this. I'm going to add a prefix. And that prefix is invoice number colon. And now you can see this is what it's extracted. So it searched the entire document for an integer that follows this prefix and down below on the left is our first result. That's our first field. Okay, let's get to our second field. Uh, I wanted to extract this bill to address. So let's create a new data field. We'll call it bill to. Now, let's do a specialized search area. Let's say for this particular invoice, we know that physically the bill to address is always in this physical location. So there's an example and an opportunity for me to search a custom area. And now it's asking me to highlight what that area is. So I'm going to make this big because every address is different. And there's our specific search area. So now you can see this is what it's about to extract. I don't want it as four separate results as you can see down the lower left. 
So I'm going to add another selector to this. This is called pipelining. You can have outputs of one selector become inputs to the next selector. So it's called selector pipelining. Unlike before, which was left and right for invoice number, that was a pattern. This is vertical, top down. That's a paragraph. And if I unclick running text here, you can see the result in the lower left is in fact that build to address. So that's our second field. Now our third field will be this table here, the line item table. So we're going to add another data field. We'll call this field our, we'll just call it table. And one of the selectors you might have remembered is in fact a table. So it's asking me to draw a rectangle around the table that I'd like to select, which I will do here. All right. It now, it's now identified that table. If you go to the left in the pipeline, it's, it recognized the headers. Down below, the result is a table containing seven rows and four columns. And if I click this Show Table button, that's the actual table that when we execute this template, and that'll be later, you'll see this in the output. Okay, now let's get to our fourth field. Notice the grand total, 103,011. So let's add another data field. We'll call this grand total. We'll add a selector. And like before, that's a pattern because it's, in this case, um, a number that follows a pattern or an anchor, as you might see in some of our documentation. So, again, on the right, these are, any, these are the things that can be extracted, and we'll whittle this down. So I, that looks like a price to me, and it's asking me, okay, I recognize prices. Which price do you want? And it's right there. And I'm going to add a prefix as well, as we did before. And this was in all caps grand total and here's our extraction 10311 and you can see that at the bottom left of the pipeline that's our fourth field let's now add our fifth and final field we want to grab this uh, QR code so I'll create a new data field and we'll call this QR We'll add a selector that's a barcode. It's asking me to draw a rectangle around the barcode. Easy enough. It's extracting and it's created that and the actual text is a URL. Well, that's our fifth and final field. Let's go ahead and start testing this. What I'm going to do here is save and exit the template editor. We're going to save this as a new version, and you always want to do this. Uh, we'll just call this version one. Because the template manager will keep track of your versions. In case you'd like to use different ones, go ahead and save this. And here we are. So We've created a template called Invoice Template. We used a reference PDF uh, that's an invoice, and we created five fields. The nice thing about this, and here's your version history, so if, as you save different versions, add new fields, delete fields, change things, you'll see the versions line up in here. And we're able to test this, this particular template, right from within the editor. So we're simulating an, a template being executed. So let's go ahead and select a file. And like before, I'm going to use the reference invoice that we used to create the template. 
and now we're executing. It's asking me if I want to pre-process. No, because that's not a scanned document. And we're executing, and here's the output. Now, PDF to data extracts data into two formats, XML with metadata or JSON with metadata. So what I'm going to do is download the result of that extraction from the editor into JSON, and it's loaded into my downloads folder here. Now, if I double click this, my default for JSON is Visual Studio Code. And this is the result of the extraction. It's JSON. Here's our bill to. Remember how we selected that. Here's our grand total. Here's our invoice number, as you can see here. Here's the content of the QR code. And then lastly, our table with the columnar headings, and then each of the seven rows as our results. This is also available to be extracted as XML as well. Okay, I'd like to point out two final things here. So you saw the result of downloading the results. That's, that's physically a file. You also can download this template for execution via our SDK. So templates can be executed from code for Java, .NET, and REST, as well as command line. And if I go back to the manager, here's our invoice template. This template can also be exported so that it can be imported into maybe another instance of the PDF to data editor manager. This concludes this demonstration for PDF to data by a prize.